Hi guys, this is Shakti from Around the Wicket, where we not only speak about the games, but we try to learn more about the humans behind our sport. And our guest today has had a burning desire to help uh, cricketers and you know help improve and grow the game of cricket uh, for a long, long time. Sachin Bajaj is very well known in the cricket fraternity all across India with the with the Cricket Club of India, one of the more prestigious and oldest cricket clubs in the country. He worked as a consultant with the Modi Entertainment Network, uh, a venture started by the pioneer of the IPL in Lalit Modi, uh, before he took up the operations uh, managing side of things with Kings 11 Punjab in the IPL. And he is the current founder of Global Cricket School, which is a project that started in 2007 and has helped grow the games and improve the games of cricketers, both international as well as domestic cricketers. Sachin, thank you so much for joining me on Around the Wicket. Firstly, though, you know, growing up in India, everyone wants to follow the path of cricket. You know, they love the game. They probably follow it more than the gods and goddesses of India. Uh, yourself, you have lived in the sport, you know, with the sport for a long, long time. Um, tell us more about your background and how you became affiliated with the game. See, uh, I, I used to rock up to play friendly matches at the at the CCI. I was never good enough to play, but would be there at most games and play play a lot. And my mentor was a gentleman called Raj Singh of Dungarpur. And he told me at, when I was about 20, he's saying, it's time you uh, get involved in running, running of cricket and helping us with the cricketing activities of the club. He was the president of the club. It's just before he became president of BCCI. And put me on the cricket committee and I worked very closely with him and a gentleman called Keki Kotwal, who was our chairman of cricket then and uh, worked in the, all the junior tournaments we used to run for the BCCI and, and just got involved in the game and just stayed with it and I've loved it and lived it and it's been, it's been a journey which has been fantastic. I've just had a great time here. One of the projects, um, you know, that is very well known is the Global Cricket School, um, something that you founded in 2007. Tell us more about, um, you know, Global Cricket School and, you know, when did this See, idea, uh, when, or how did this idea come about? See, the idea actually germinated when I used to work with a friend of mine, uh, Zubin, back in 2002. And uh, we decided that it's a great opportunity to bring uh, cricketers to India to play. And uh, what what they were targeting was to you know advertise on on television and bring expats back to play. But that's mm -hmm. when I I told I told them that you know what I've got a few contacts in the counties. You know, let's give it a shot. Let's get a couple of county players out. So that's when you know we went around. I met all the English counties a couple of times. Didn't get much headway, but the first four or five guys who came out to our practice at the at the Brabon in those days. Yep. There was a gentleman called Ed Smith who yep. went on to play for England and is now chairman of selectors. And uh, the next uh, person who came out to us uh, went on to captain England. He might even be the next CEO of Cricket Australia, a gentleman called Andrew Strauss. So one thing led to another and rather than working with just the uh, expat Indian community, there we started working with the counties and entered the development space in a big way. And one thing led to another and uh, we, we our business took off and uh, I worked uh, in partnership till 2007. I went my own way and set up Global Cricket School in 2007. It's been a great journey right from 2002 and from 2007. Worked with all the major cricket boards in the world, Cricket Australia, Cricket South Africa, Cricket New Zealand, England and Wales Cricket Board. Worked with, in the development space with Afghanistan, Cricket Ireland, Cricket Scotland. It's been good there. Yeah. Can't complain. It's a given fact that the games of the Australians, the English, um, you know, South Africans have improved when when they come to India nowadays. Um, what's the what's the generalized feedback they give you, um, and what do they find most beneficial uh, of the program? See, it's the see in in ten days, twenty days, one month. You really can't coach anybody. It's about giving them the Indian experience on Indian conditions with Indian coaches. See, in life, you can't really coach somebody. Hmm. Coaching is self-coaching. What our coaches do is they throw ideas at people and give them quality time in the nets with loads of net bowlers who are present. So they can try different things and they know what works for them and then they evolve from there. Yeah. 
it's about giving them the experience under different conditions and having coaches present there who point them in the right direction. It's not about saying this is how you hold your bat or that is how you do it, but just giving them ideas from their experiences and it evolves from there. From 2007 to now, you would have experienced some wonderful memories uh, with GC GCS. Um, you know, can you share some some of the ones that you know that stick to your stick to your mind? See, it, it's be it's been a journey. Just having worked with so many players who've gone on to play uh, for their countries, I think the one thing that I am very proud about is in the last World Cup final, we had. Across both teams, uh, 16 players who played the World Cup final, who we have not coached, but who've been to our camps at different stages, who we've helped prepare. So mm. we've given the opportunity to 16 people who played a World Cup final to enjoy an experience in India, Sri Lanka, or wherever else we run our centers. And uh, they, I'd be, how I look at it is we've done a small, I'd say less than 1% bit to contribute to the growth of the game. That's how I look at it. I don't claim credit for having produced any cricketer because that's a load of bollocks. You can't <laughs> produce cricketers. You can only give them an opportunity. And everyone takes their destiny and takes it ahead. Yeah. And what's the future plans for GCS? Uh, where where you are? See, I, I think this, uh, camps should be shut for a couple of years now because, yeah. I mean, as much everyone says things will get better in three months, four months, I... I I'm not, I'm not sure if it does, it's a bonus. And maybe it, uh, in my free time, I've been writing a few cricket books. I did a book last year on the four spinners, Bedi, Chandra, Prasanna and Venkat. And I'm working on another book right now. I've got a sports psychology book that I've written with Stuart Cottrell that will release next month. And then I've got another book on, uh, I'm doing on the, we're working on the impact of uh, the five legends of India. Uh, Dravid, Lakshman, Ganguly, Sehwag, uh, and the legend, the master. Your namesake. <laughs> Not my namesake, I'm his namesake. Yeah. <laughs> and and the, the, the great Sachin Tendulkar, the greatest, I would say. Yeah. And then eventually I want to do a book on my, on, on my all-time hero, Sunil Gavaskar. That, that would be next because uh, that one man's contribution to the game in India. And he's the first guy who put India on the world map, gave us the respect, yeah. fought for money to be paid <clears> to players. But one doesn't want to do a book on Sunil Kawaskar and his batting technique and his 34 test 100 and his 10,122 runs. But the impact Sunny Kawaskar had on Indian cricket and world cricket, it's about the, as a fan, the impact it had on our generation growing up. I think nobody has written on that, so I'm keen to explore that as an option. Wonderful. Um, you stated about the fortune turners, you know, the four legendary spinners, the quartet, as they call them. Tell us about that book. You co-authored the book. And what's, what's the impact those four, four individuals had on Indian cricket? Uh, we started winning overseas tours when they came into their prime. We had that uh, run of three uh, uh, consecutive series uh, where we beat uh, West Indies and England and England at home, but two of the series were West Indies uh, in the West Indies. That was Sunny Gavaskar's debut series and England straight after that. So uh, it, it, was, it was massive there. Yeah. And uh, it changed Indian cricket forever. Yeah. We I started to ask you in the experience of writing that book, you know, how long did that take and how was See, it I received? Wrote it. I wrote, I, it, book's been well received. I actually co-wrote it with a gentleman called Aditya Bhushan, who's the main writer of the book. Yeah. But my role in the book was giving my inputs, you know, writing a, love, a little bit of it, giving it direction as to what we should portray to the user, uh, to the to the reader, and see that, see, their story had not been told till we wrote that book. Yeah. Individually, bits and bobs were written. Prasanna wrote an autobiography called One More Over. But Prasanna's all, our autobiography was all about I did this and I did that. Uh, and uh, it never, maybe at that time he was writing his story, but I think a story of the four spinners have to be told as a quartet. Yeah. And uh, two of them went on to cap Captain India, uh, two of the spinners, Bedi and uh, Venkat. 
and it played a huge huge uh, they played a huge role in india going to the next level along with the likes of uh, sunny gavaskar and gr vishwanath i think that was our, our golden our golden era that's where india came into its own internationally mm-hmm. got the respect the era under sunny gavaskar's captaincy vice chairman and you know tell us about what makes that cricket club so so special it's for starters it's so home i live 100 meters away from there <laughs> and i've grown up there and it, it has been where indian cricket has blossomed right from when we it was set up in 34 it uh, it's what do you call that's my daughter yeah, one of your twins come and say hi to uncle hello one of the twins that's her head CCI is where it was formed to promote Indian cricket. A very great story how CCI was formed. Uh, Jardine led uh, England team to play the inaugural test in uh, Bombay Gymkhana, which is a colonial club back in those days, and they had a board saying Indians and dogs not allowed. It was a European club, <clears throat> typically Brit of those days. Nothing wrong, yeah. but Maharaj Bhupendra Singh Patiala, who had funded. was funding indian cricket in many ways at that time wasn't allowed in the pavilion he had seen watch it from the west stand which is the hindu gymkhana seats and they asked him sir this is your state what is ours so he he went to the governor of bombay lord brabon and uh, who was a very good man and said right i'll allocate uh, some land and uh, maharaja patiala the anthony de mello formed what was called the cricket club of india and it was a toss up between whether it would be held in uh, the cricket club would be based in bombay or in delhi cricket club of india played their first match in delhi not in bombay but then it came to bombay and uh, they built they, they built they, they built it and that it became the home of indian cricket in the 70s mm. but uh, then bankere stadium got built cricket went but we still get a lot of cricket we had a test match against sri lanka about 9 years ago we've had uh, we ho- hosted ipl we have ranji trophy games including a final year irani trophy we host the yeah the giles and harris shield the school tournament finals we are very much in the development space of cricket and doing our bit in assisting indian cricket uh, as much as we can there was another thing that you know was supposed to happen this year 2020 uh, the spirit of cricket global challenge uh, I think at some stage this will happen again. We CCI hosted the first one back in 2001. It was Melbourne, Malibon, and CCI. So we yeah. we CCI pioneered it at Rath Singh's time. And uh, I think at some stage when things get better, we will we will revisit this. Year. It's a lot of fun. Former cricketers, club cricketers, get together, have a few beers, play cricket, play it in the right spirit. It's not about winning. It's yeah. about having fun. <laughs> and you know uh, and all three institutions were the pioneers of their of their, of their time you know melbourne cricket malibone and cci they are very yeah. i'd say the number one club so <clears throat> i i i still I, i'm a little more i'm a i'm a big scg man being an scg member yeah. so <laughs> scg has got added on to that bandwagon with neil maxwell and uh, the rest of them and uh, pro hong kong cricket club and this will eventually be the world's pioneer club tournament it's not played for any commercial stuff there no tv rights none of that it's just old fashioned cricket yep. that we will play in white say ipl ipl experience as well as the manager of operations with the kings 11 punjab um, i did it did it for a year it was interesting everyone was learning as we went along and uh, it's something i enjoyed but finally i always wanted to work in the development space So hence I was never going to be a permanent fixture. They got back to running my academy, which gave me a lot more pleasure. For you, it's good. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, worked with some good people, worked with some good team owners, worked with some good coaches. Great experience working with people like Tom Moody. Yeah, who I think is and we we had some unbelievably good people in our team like Jai Vardhana, Sangakara, Simon Katich, Brett Lee. We really really enjoyed uh, working with them. It it was a very very good time yeah and we really enjoyed it and with interesting characters like shri shant yeah it was a lot of fun <laughs> he's still interesting isn't he <laughs> hey, he's a good man though i i, I like him 
yourself personally, what's um, you know what's the vision moving forward for for yourself and you know, the goals? Uh, See, uh, the keep 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 writing about the game. Speak spreading the gospel, as I call it. Having fun and uh, helping people play better cricket as and when the time's appropriate. Yeah. I have also done an amateur cricket league in Bombay called Last Man Stands Your Player in Australia. Yeah, yeah, so does, yeah. I, I work very closely with them, with Beyond Briggs and Wayne Greep. And I run Last Man Stands in Mumbai for them, more out of fun than anything else. Yeah, yeah Last Man Stands is a very good tournament, especially for all the um, you know communities, multicultural communities here in, here in Australia. Yeah, 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 so I hold the rights to run them in Bombay and the surrounding areas and I love it. Yeah. Beautiful. Sachin, thank you so much, man, for joining me on Around the Wicket. I uh, appreciate your time. Always good to learn about the culture, the heritage, you know, the history about the game in India. Um, all the best for the future. Continue to yeah. keep growing the game as you always do. Um, and fingers yeah. crossed that we can cross paths uh, when this COVID crisis situation... No, I, I'll come and see you in Sydney sooner rather than later. The opportunity will come. What? Okay, my friend, you take care. Thank you, Sachin. Enjoy the rest of your day. All the best. And the little one is... Bye. Well. Take care. Bye bye. bye. She's saying bye. Say bye. Say bye to uncle. Say bye to uncle. Bye bye. Yeah, to uncle.